It's been May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Almost seven months since we bought our condo. And I thought that it was about time to give you an update of what it's like living in this condo, specifically a studio apartment. How do I feel about spending money so much money on my mortgage every month. Do I regret buying a condo, a studio specifically? Right off the bat, I must say that I am extremely happy with our condo purchase. Since we've moved to this condo from our old place, which we rented, which was also a studio apartment, but slightly smaller, I've really noticed a huge improvement in lifestyle and I'm enjoying this place so much. From a financial aspect, I'm also very happy that we made this decision to purchase this condo because even though we are paying so much money for our mortgage, for insurance, for maintenance fees and utilities. I'll tell you how much later on in this video. If I look at the rental market now and compare what we're paying for our condo to how much we would need to pay to rent a similar type of unit, then I'd say that buying this condo was the better decision. As you know, the rent in Toronto and in other cities in Canada is so expensive right now and it's only going to continue to rise and at least our mortgage, although it is a a lot of money will stay constant at least for the next four years after which we would need to refinance. So the size of the studio apartment for those of you who don't know yet is about 420 ish square feet. And I know it's not a lot of space, especially considering that the two of us are living here, my husband and I. So in this video, I want to share with you how it's like living in this studio apartment, what cooking in a studio is like, working in a studio with two people in here, privacy and guests. What about if you have have guests in the studio apartment, the facilities in this building, whether or not we have enough storage and also the location. So first of all, let's talk about cooking. As you can see, the kitchen is very small and we don't even have an island. And at first, when we just moved in, I must say I was a bit concerned whether or not we would have enough space to store all of our stuff and whether or not there would be enough space for cooking and doing our prep. And it turned out that I was sort of right. It does feel a bit cramped. The kitchen or let's say the cooking area is quite small. So in order to make it work, we really have to be aware of the items that we keep in our kitchen. We have to, let's say, keep a very compact kitchen, only keep items, utensils that we really use. And we basically only have one set of everything. And having this little space just forces us to be very organized. But even though the space is small, I would say that I enjoy this kitchen very much. I'm really loving this granite countertop and also the fact that the appliances are really high quality. They're very easy to work with. Now, what about this induction hob? I slightly prefer to have a gas stove. This induction stovetop takes quite some care to clean. Also because of this very limited space, we only keep very minimal appliances. We have one huge Insta pot under the sink. And apart from that, all our appliances are here in this corner. So as you can see, we have a coffee grinder, we have this water boiler. And by the way, I switched out my old black plastic bottom boiler to this one here because it's 100% stainless steel on the inside, which is much, much better from a health perspective. And also we got this new stainless steel French press and I love this one so much. It's so sturdy and you practically can't break it. And it also looks nice aesthetically. So I got these from Amazon and they're quite cheap. So in case you're also looking for a water cooker or a French press, then you can check my Amazon affiliate link in the descriptions below. Now looking at the fridge, as you can see, this fridge is not very large, especially not for North American standards. Back then when I lived in Germany and Europe, I think that it was pretty normal for people to have about this kind of uh, fridge size. But what I noticed in North America was that everyone would have these huge refrigerators. Now one thing that some people asked me in the comments was regarding the smell when we're cooking. When we're cooking and after we're done cooking, does doesn't the smell linger in the apartment? The smell doesn't linger that long. It doesn't really bother me. So guys, in case any of you are considering to buy a studio apartment and the only thing that might bother you is the potential smell, then I would say that you would not need to worry too much about that unless you are super, super sensitive. As many of you guys know, I live here in my studio apartment together with my husband. So two adults, both working full time. How does that work? Surprisingly for us, it works very, very well, but I can see why it may not work for all couples. The reason that it works for us is that 
I would say our modes of work are a bit different. So my husband is an accountant. He works mostly from home four days a week currently. And as you can imagine, as an accountant, he mostly just sits at his desk in front of his laptop the whole day. And I, because I'm self-employed, I have much more flexibility. Sometimes I work at my work table slash kitchen table or my temporary standing desk here in front of my iMac and edit videos or sometimes even on the sofa. And I would say that even though it's a very small space, we don't really notice it. I mean, when you're in front of your laptop and you're so absorbed working and you're concentrating, then you don't really register what is going on around you. So guys, I have to tell you that the view from our unit is really beautiful. I mean, I'm not exactly looking at a scenic landscape or so, but I am kind of looking at a skyline and a lot of trees and best of all, it is unobstructed. And that I just noticed maybe one or two months ago is extremely important. When we were in the process of looking for an apartment, for a condo, some of the units were directly facing other apartment buildings and we weren't really into that and luckily my hunch was right about that especially if you're living in a studio apartment in a very small space i think it's even more important that you have this unobstructed view because that kind of uh, gives the illusion of a bigger space okay but what about privacy do you have any sort of privacy living in a studio apartment i would say if you're sharing a studio apartment with a roommate then no it's not possible it is just not possible to have that kind of separation but for a couple of I think that it works out very well but of course it will depend on your personality because there are people with with certain personalities who just need much more privacy and who need much more of their own space but for us I think that we have similar personalities uh, in some way so it works out very well for one both of us are introverts we are rather quiet people and interestingly uh, uh, my husband and I, we also have similar levels of energy. So none of us is really hyper or has the need to talk all the time, but neither of us is the type of person who needs 100% silence all of the time. Even if there's a bit of a background sound, we can still work. And if someone really wants to listen to a podcast or music or so, while the other really wants to have silence, then one person will just use their headphones. And also the great thing about living in a nice condo is that you have a lot of common spaces that you can use. Now, what about guests? Can you ever have guests in a studio apartment? It seems as though it's impossible, but actually it's very possible. Just this summer, my mom came and visited us and she actually slept on the sofa bed over here. So of course it's not as comfortable as a real bed, but for her, at least she says, it worked out pretty well. But what if we had more than one guest, like let's say two? In that case, I would simply buy a cheap single IKEA mattress. Of course, it's not optimal, but if I think about it, how many times in a year do I actually have guests who stay over? So far, maybe once every two years. So what about the facilities in this condo? Are they as good as I expected them to be? And the answer is yes, I was positively surprised. I'm really enjoying the swimming pool I swim on average once per week and there is also a steaming room and a sauna that's especially nice in the winter and the gym is also pretty good. I would say it's a mid-sized gym. So in the spring and summer, my husband and I, we always go on walks every afternoon or evening, like for about 40 minutes. But now as the days are getting colder and also darker, sometimes we skip a day, especially if it's raining and also later on when it's snowing. So during fall and winter, I think having the option to go to the gym within your own building, within your own condo is, is a really great thing. You don't even need to go somewhere else to a gym to do your workout. So when you're choosing a condo, I think that the quality of the facilities is really something to consider because it adds to your quality of life. So what about storage room? At first, I must say that I had some concerns whether or not um, there was enough storage room, but it turns out that it was enough. I recently made a video where I changed from my spring summer wardrobe to fall and winter. You can watch the video up here. And as you can see, uh, my husband and I, we have all of our clothing in this one closet. We just divide this closet into two. And as you can see, we really do not have a lot of stuff, but 
Actually, that's not all there is to it. We have clothing stored in our suitcases, like huge suitcases. Each of us has one suitcase uh, under the bed. So if you live in a studio apartment, it's a really good idea to get a bed that is elevated high enough above the ground that it can fit huge suitcases because that can act as extra storage room. And of course, we also have our storage in the front near the entrance. So there we hang our jackets, our winter jackets at the moment, but we also use it as storage for staple items, big bags of rice, sometimes also toilet paper, light bulbs, etc. So the third storage place that we have is this white cabinet over here which i got from wayfair and i love this very much because it kind of camouflages into the wall because of the color and we have our printer stored inside here and all our office stuff then our fourth storage space is in the bathroom in this cabinet this over the toilet cabinet that we got from amazon and this is made out of bamboo and i think that this is one of our best purchases so far because it just I mean, it just looks really nice, right? And it's also water resistant. But the biggest reason perhaps by far that I love this condo is the location. Although I can't disclose to you the exact location, I can tell you that this condominium is located very close to a subway station. Anytime we need to go somewhere, it's just five minutes to the subway and we can get to downtown in like 20, 25 minutes. There are also a ton of eateries and cafes around here, so we're not lacking that at all. And there's also a grocery store near here. If it's dinner time and suddenly we notice that, oops, we don't have any pepper anymore or whatever then we can just run to the grocery store and get that now let's talk about the cost of this condo this is something that i guess many of you are interested in after buying this condo and having lived here for almost seven months how do i feel about spending money so much money on my mortgage every month and i also asked my husband this question by the way it turns out that both of us are okay with it. We feel that the money spent is worth the purchase. So let me just give you a very high level breakdown. So the mortgage that we pay every month is approximately $2,600. We pay about $100 per month in taxes. Maintenance fees are $300 plus per month. Insurance is about $40. Uh, that's on the lower end. And for utilities, so far we have been paying around $70 to $80 per month on average. So that in total amounts to $3,120 approximately. But let's take out items uh, like insurance and utilities because those are things that we would need to pay regardless of whether we're renting or buying. So if we just look at the components that are relevant to buying a unit, so in total that's $2,600 plus $100 plus $300, that amounts to $3,000. $3,000 per month for a small studio apartment. So how do we feel about that? We feel that it's very expensive, but relatively to what we would need to pay if we rented, it's money well spent. I mean, if rents were still at the level as they were, let's say five years ago, when you could rent a one bedroom apartment for perhaps $1,700, $1,800, then of course buying at this price would be much more expensive than renting. But if you look at rents now in Toronto, a uh, one bedroom apartment can easily cost you $25, $2,700 and even a studio apartment, something similar to where we're living in, can cost you $21 or even $2,300. So if we compare, let's just say $2,200 of rent for a similar studio apartment um, against $3,000 for our mortgage and other payments, then of course, at first glance, there's a difference of $800. But keep in mind that a part of the mortgage that we're paying, which is actually about $800 per month, goes into our equity so it's not lost so if you compare both of those options actually from a financial perspective they're pretty similar especially in the short term but also remember that in the long term if we stay in this place for more than five years if we keep it let's say even 10 years then there is a high chance a very very high chance of capital appreciation which we do not get from renting and that is why I think that as a starter unit for us, this was a very, very good choice. It was just within our means while still having money left to invest in other things like the stock market. Now, do I have any buyer's remorse at all? To be honest, um, I must say that after moving here uh, once in a while, we looked at 
some listings and especially my husband he kept looking at other listings just to compare the prices and how much condos sold for over the months and although we didn't have any buyer's remorse um there was one thing that um maybe upset us just a bit but maybe only for five minutes or so and then we were fine again and that was that we saw a listing in this same building that was a one bedroom apartment so not a studio like we have which only cost about i think about fifteen thousand dollars or so more and yeah for a second i must say i thought oh we should have bought that unit instead i mean only fifteen thousand dollars more and then you get um extra I don't know 10 or 12 square meters more space right but then i realized that okay there was a flaw in my thinking which was that at that time when we purchased this unit that unit was not on the market yet not at that price at least because back then interest rates were still much lower we still got an interest rate early this year at i think 4.6 something percent whereas now mortgage interest rates are close to around six percent and that of course has an effect on the price so it just doesn't make sense to have any regret now let's talk about what my favorite thing of living in this studio apartment is i would say that it's the efficiency the possibility to do many things at once i know that it's not always a good thing but i like having the option so sometimes when i need to work a bit longer but i also need to cook my chili soup i can do both things kind of at the same time so i can work on editing my video while watching the chili soup that is cooking on the stove or if we're done with dinner and i'm doing the dishes and maybe that takes me 15 minutes or so and uh, my husband is browsing at our standing iMac desk we can still chat while washing the dishes which is kind of nice but of course it's only that nice because I must say that the two of us get along very very well if you don't get along that well with your spouse then of course you would not want to spend that much time in the same space and I also understand that living in a small space is not for everyone and honestly I wouldn't say that I I'd always prefer a smaller space to a larger space someday in the future maybe in five years or ten years down the road we will someday want to move to a larger space a two-bedroom apartment or even even a detached or a semi-detached house but right now I just feel this studio is right for us because the two of us are just so busy with work and it's much much easier to take care of every week we clean our studio apartment and we get it done within like only 30 minutes a long time ago when we were still in Indonesia we actually owned a home which was about 200 square meters large and after a while cleaning the space got so tiring and so time consuming that we had to hire people to clean the house for us and that was also extra cost so for now I'm absolutely happy with the studio apartment and I think we're gonna stay here for at least five years I would say if there are any changes in the meantime and we upgrade to something else I will definitely let you know guys so guys I hope you enjoyed this video let me know your thoughts in the comments below are you also in the process Process of buying a condo or are you thinking of living in a studio apartment as well let me know your thoughts below in the comment section i would really love to hear from you thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon in the next video bye